The blood washed away, but the guilt never does. Welcome to Hidden Killers with Tony Bruschi, featuring psychotherapist and author Siobhan Scott. Two new documentaries coming out about Scott Peterson. Yes, that Scott Peterson, Lacey Peterson, his deceased wife, who he's spending the rest of his life in jail for murdering, convicted on that uh, very charge. But he's saying again, all these years later, it wasn't me. Could that possibly be true? It all comes down to a single piece of duct tape that's being examined for DNA. He's not been granted a new trial yet, but we'll see where all this goes. Joining me to discuss, Siobhan Scott, psychotherapist and author. What are we dealing with here? Uh, with Scott Peterson coming back all these years later? I mean, um, obviously he's someone who we could probably easily say is a narcissist based on his past behavior. Is this just him Wanting some more attention because there's been many uh, horrible people in the public spotlight since him. Yeah, I'm all about let's look at the evidence. If there's, you know, anything that can be found and discovered, we certainly don't want a, a case where somebody has been wrongly imprisoned. But yeah, it's really questionable. Can he prove that he is just a horrible person who lied a about, you know, his pregnant wife? I mean, all the things he did were just awful. So can he prove that, yes, he's an awful person, but not a murderer? I'm curious. Yeah, I mean, that seems to be what he's saying uh, in a lot of these uh, in, in the interviews of, yes, I was a horrible person, but it doesn't mean I murdered my wife. I, I, a lot of people, I think, would argue, yeah, you probably did, because there is a mountain of evidence pointing to the fact that you likely murdered your wife. Um just to break some of that down, uh, the fishing alibi, number one, this is a boat he claimed he was going to give as a gift, uh, went fishing for sturgeon uh, with a uh, with a fishing pole. That's that's not how you catch sturgeon. Um, <laughs> and uh, in an area where he normally never goes to, it just happens to be exactly where uh, the bodies of uh, Lacey and their unborn child were found. Um, and it just happens to be that uh, some of the anchors in the boat were identical to the ones that were weighing her body down. There's a lot to get over here, and I don't, I'm don't. i not quite understanding how a single piece of duct tape with maybe someone else's DNA on it is going to sway a jury otherwise, even if the duct tape had been in the trial originally. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's you know, the odds of this, uh, you know, revealing something new and important and there's a different perpetrator, pretty tiny, pretty tiny. I mean, how how would any of this play? Because it's not like these other pieces of evidence are going to go away. Um, you know, we, we've seen other cases where, where duct tape is involved and it's easily dismissed as, well, it's duct tape. It, it can easily get anybody's DNA on it if you can just handle the role itself, you know, yeah. on the outside. Um, I mean, so one could argue... You know, maybe somebody handled it at the store and there was DNA uh, that was, was placed on it. In the, the Rex Hewerman uh, case, the, the DNA of his wife, and I believe, I could be, I don't think I'm misspeaking here, but I believe even his daughter's DNA was on one piece that they found. And it was just being racked up to, well, it's communal duct tape. You're going to, in mm -hmm. a house, you're going to have that. Um, so where are they is this something you think is really going to to get some traction and some ground, you know, on on this idea that just because there's some DNA in a piece of duct tape that it's going to spark a new trial? Yeah, I, I think it's doubtful. And to me, I would only be speculating and guessing um, it it doesn't look very likely. Mm -hmm. But I'm all about, you know, let's get to the truth. And mm -hmm. if you can get something that is questionable enough, then you know, take a look at it. Is there anything that Scott can do himself? I mean, as his own witness, obviously he's spoken many times in the past. He's speaking again. Um, is this, uh, obviously he has nothing to lose at this point, but is it, uh, it could either go one way or the other uh, in this these interviews. It could solidify him as being maybe we should find out more or it could sink him even further. I'm imagining he needed to be a bit careful with, with how he phrased things and how he talks about things in this interview. Yeah, I imagine he's put a lot of time into strategizing, you know, before doing the interviews. And he really has no grounds to say anything 
about his behavior because his his um, documented awful behavior and his lies and his manipulation was, you know, revealed to all of us way back when. And so he has to own that part of it. And can he put enough doubt out there? You know, again, assuming he's narcissistic, psychopathic, can he be charming and believable enough? He may think he can. All right, true crime addicts, let's cut the crap. You're knee deep in the gory details of your favorite podcast when suddenly a commercial hits like a bad meal. Seriously? You deserve better. Upgrade to True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts, where you can binge without those annoying ads. Plus, get extended interviews that go deeper into the darkness and early access to episodes so you can be the first to know. It's like trading up from fast food to fine dining, but with more blood. So, go ahead. Search for True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe and feast on the good stuff.